This was no ordinary outing to the zoo. It was a very special occasion. It was part of a programme filmed in 1964 when we brought together a group of seven-year-old children from vastly different backgrounds. We went to prep schools, primary schools, state schools and private schools and picked out 14 children. We brought them together because we wanted a glimpse of the shop steward and the executive of the year 2000. Give me a child until he is seven and I will give you the man. These children are now 14, halfway between childhood and manhood. This is our interim report. If we did all um, love Geoffrey and we all want to marry him, yeah, I think I know the one that he likes best, and that's her. <laughs> Jackie, Lindsay, Susan. <laughs> plenty of boyfriends, but what? Not one. Yeah, not one in particular. You, oh, you, friends, you're friends, yeah. with, uh, friends with plenty of boys, you know. My heart's desire is to see my daddy, who's six thousand miles away. Bruce. You know, I'm having, I've been getting on well with my stepfather, and I like to see my father occasionally, and he does come over from Rhodesia. Do you have a girlfriend? Nicholas from the Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> I don't want to answer that. I don't answer those kind of questions. No, I'm not answering that. Susie. I gave that up as a failure. I was going to be a policeman, but I thought how hard it would be to join in. Paul. Basketball appeals to me most, but with a school, I'm one of their best players in Form 2. But when I get into a team, they make me look like I can't play. Well, I, f I feel like bundling when there's already a, when there's already a fight. I was going to be a film star. But... Simon. Now I'm going to be a, an electrical engi engineer, which is more to reality, really. Singing Waltzing Matilda in Latin at an exclusive pre-prep school in Kensington, we chose three boys. Charles, Andrew, I read the Financial Times, and John. I read Observer and the Times. What do you like about it? John? Well, I like, I usually look at the headlines and then read about them, what, about it. I like my newspaper because I got shares in it and I know every day what the, stuff the shares like are. Stuff like you. <laughs> no, but, but uh, on Mondays they don't move up, so I don't look at it. I made several blunders on 7-Up. For instance, I said I was going to Trinity Hall instead of Trinity College. They didn't like that too much, nor did my father. Also, I rather exaggerated when I said that I, how much I liked stocks and shares because I don't anymore. How do you think you've changed since you were seven? Well, I mean, one grows so slowly that one never notices. Honestly, I mean, I feel the same as I felt at seven. I may not be. I... When I leave the school, I'm going to college court. And then I will be going to Westminster boarding school if I pass the exam. John passed the entrance exam and is a weekly boarder at Westminster school. When I leave school, I'm going to the Dragon School. I might, and Mum is, and I might go to. After I might go to Charterhouse, Marlborough. Charles is at Marlborough. When I leave the school, I go to Broadstairs, St Peter's Court. Then after that, I'm going to Charterhouse. Andrew is at Charterhouse. When I leave the school, I'm down for. He's still in Southover Manor. Susie is at Southover Manor. Uh, would everybody please sit round? One now? third of our children, their education was pre planned and paid for. The remainder went to state schools and their future seemed less certain. I want to be a jockey when I grow up. Yeah, I want to be a jockey when I grow up. Tony is on the way to achieving his ambition. He spends all his free time at Tommy Gosling's racing stables at Epsom. My dad got me Mr. Gosling. 
And Mr. Gosling told me I can come here for every school holidays and learn a bit more. Next April, I'll be leaving school and I'll work for him for good. Did your parents encourage you to do this? Yeah, they're pleased with me what I've got to, you know, going to do. You know, they always has wanted me to be a jockey. Why? Enjoyment. Just to say my son's a jockey, like, you know what I mean? Tony's change from elementary school to secondary modern didn't alter his ambition. But how about the other children? Has a change of school changed them? Bruce was at a pre-preparatory boarding school in Surrey. And that storm of heat gives me nightmares. I was about five when I went there, and then... I suppose I was too young, really, to understand it. And I thought it was a bit severe at the time, but then I just got used to it and didn't have sort of any impulses to do things wrong or anything like that. And I just got into the track of, you know, of what they said you must do and mustn't. Go on, steady! Go on, left foot inward, play! Go on, breathing! at St Paul's. I like the um, companionship, you know, with other boys, really. And you get that much more in a boarding school. Well, I think boarding makes you feel self-sufficient. And also it teaches you to be away from your parents <coughs> and to live with people for a long time, which you have to do in later life anyway. Yeah, well, I agree with that, certain amount, but um, when you board on a weekly basis, you have the best of both worlds, so to speak. One sees one's parents at the weekend, and one gets all the benefits from an English boarding school. Well, I think prep school boarding is a bad idea. Yes. Because um, up to about 12, maybe it's different with other people, but I, I found that you're much more attached to your parents M once you come to about 13, 14. You're not quite so attached to them. Two of our boys who didn't have the chance to be attached to their parents were those brought up in a children's home supported by charity. Simon. I had one dream and everything flew up in the air. It that all landed on my head. Simon stayed at the home until last Christmas when he returned to live with his mother. They say, uh, where's your father then? You know, when your mum's out at work, they tell your father. I just tell him I ain't got one. What effect has that had on you? Well, I don't think it's had any effect on me, because what you don't have, you don't miss, and as far as I can see. Also at the children's home with Simon was Paul. He and his family emigrated when he was eight. I don't like the big boys. Hitting us and, and the monitors up in the washroom sending us out when there's no talking. And I wasn't talking today and, he, and Brown sent me out for nothing. What do you remember of England? Mm -hmm. It seemed to be raining all the time. I wouldn't stake my life on it because I can't remember very much. He went to Australia to start a new life. Well, I was going to become a bank accountant but it's more book taking the mess and that was the main reason I was thinking about becoming a panel beater and I don't know why and I've stopped thinking about that I just haven't made up my mind yet I was going to be a phys ed teacher but uh, one of the teachers told me that uh, you had to get up into university were you happy at the children's home in England we didn't mind that really because we didn't know what was going on, because we're a bit young. <coughs> were you happier then than you are now? Um, in a way, yeah, I was. But then I'm happier for being at home. At the school, everything you wanted, you just had it, and, you know, everybody was your friend. And you never knew any enemies, really. But here, 
people are undecided about you. They can be your friend one day and not the next. And then I moved up to a comprehensive school. I found it much bigger, of course, and I found it hard to settle into it first. From a Liverpool suburb, returning home from the comprehensive school, Neil and Peter. I'm much more happy now than when I first came. You get to know different types of people, people with different sort of brains, you know, from the very sort of very clever people to the, you know, people who haven't got much sense at all, really. Well, we, we pretend we've got swords, and uh, yeah. we make the noise of the swords fighting, and then uh, when somebody stabs us, we go, ah. I've been playing since I started at the comprehensive school since the first year. We play international wrestling. Yeah, that's where yeah. it's summertime though. Yeah, it's only when we can go on the grass. They used to be a senior team, but they lost interest. Watch this. Chip <laughs> race. Oh, hey. Hmm? Gosh, it is. You do that. This is a very good idea to have competition. Otherwise, you might start to relax, really, and not so try hard enough. What do you think? I agree, yes. This is a good thing. If there was no one to compete with you, you wouldn't be trying as hard. The three little girls from the East End had the choice of going to a comprehensive or a grammar school. I'm going to work in Woolworths. Lindsay chose the grammar school. Why am I using wooden spoon, please, to stir this saucepan? The noise, yes, we've got 16 people, 16 saucepans. We don't want the noise from 16 people stirring with metal spoons. This was my first choice, and this is where I turned up, even though some of my friends were going to the other school. I didn't feel like uh, going to a grammar school. I just, uh, you know, comprehensive school, it just seemed more friendly, you know, at the time, that is, but now, you know, they're really different. Grammar school's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you say something. Well, we've all got our opinions. <laughs> what like advantages has the comprehensive school got? Oh, especially this school. It's new and they've got everything, everything you could want. They, yeah, they've got yeah, the equipment and... I mean, uh, what I enjoy about this school is, with this school, we do metal work and woodwork, and the boys do cookery. I mean, we get a share of everything, sort of thing, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Good though, isn't it? Metal work yeah. and that. Yeah. Good well, in a grammar school, I don't think you find many girls that really want to do metal work or woodwork. No. no see, that, that's what I mean. That's I think difference. that's the difference. The difference. Schools, that's that sort of thing that shows the uh, difference in the people. One of the keys to the character of the seven-year-old was how they spent their free time. Bruce had his school band. When I go home. I come, I come in and mummy gives me a cup of tea and then I go out and play. And when it starts to get dark, I come in again and put on TV. Well, I had to go to bed till seven. I used to go to bed at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Sometimes I go dog racing, because I like, you know, going there for something to do at night. So I don't really do anything at night. I only buy going dogs or watch other things, to watch telly. I didn't watch very much television. I used to watch it a lot, but I'm not watching it so much. And I think it's good because a lot of it is corrupting me a bit. I like cereals, like uh, Paper Place and Crossroads. Why do you watch yeah. Crossroads when I came? For one thing, the advertisements, you know, I've, I, know, I can recite about six tunes off, and it just doesn't, it just seems a worthless thing to know. There are too many things going on at school, though we ha do have a television, and at the weekend I can be more selective, and there's not much that I like. Well, I'm quite interested in archaeology, and we're doing a local dig at Binscombe near our school. Being in set one, it's very, very hard to keep up with the leaders. I never have a time to relax at all. Well, what do you do in an evening? Oh, uh, Just go out with friends normally. Yeah. <laughs> or to clubs sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like many clubs, I know it's disgusting. It really is. Uh, we have people t talking about it on television, but it's really bad around in the East End. It really is. It's hardly anything. There's always something to do here. I'm never ever bored. 
Susie now lives in Scotland on her father's 4,000 acre estate. It's very, very small, really. We've only got one spare room. It's my room. There's Mummy's room. I mean, it's very small. There's the kitchen, the dining room, the drawing room, and another little room where we mostly sit so that we have people in. And that's really it. What sort of things do you do? Um, ride, swim, play tennis, ping pong. I um, might play croquet, something like that. What about the social life? What's that? Modern Persia? Yeah. Mm, it's quite fun. There are little lots of things going on. I think your dog's got a rabbit. What are you going to do? <laughs> do you want to try and save it? Max, bring it here. Oh, disgusting dog. It's the second one you've given me in the second week. Oh, oh Max, for God's sake, leave it alone. Does that worry you? No, nope, not at all. They don't want to see his birds and things wounded. Don't like that. You know, they run off and you never get a chance to kill them. Why doesn't it worry you that things should have to be killed? Well, I've been brought up to it. Yes, Nat mustn't be late there. I should, uh, quite quietly, it's a very nonchalant little theme. Uh, butter wouldn't melt in its mouth, so take it very quietly and let it just present itself. We have about uh, ten pianos and practice rooms and their orchestras, choral societies and two choirs. And, well, it's a marvellous music system. There's too much competition nowadays. Um, there, there's so many good pianists, and only very few make the grade one, and I think it must be very disparaging if you can only get half the money. Are you ambitious? Yes. What for? Well, fame. And power. What sort of power? Political power. Are you ruthless? Not really. Do you think you can have political power without being ruthless? Yes. Well, what qualities do you need to have political power then if it's not ruthlessness? Mm, great strength of mind. They'd like to come out for a holiday in the country when we like, when I like to have a holiday in the town. No, I've been to Leeds a couple of times, and I haven't, I haven't been to Manchester. Um, I went to London with the other th pro when you did the first programme, but that's the only time I've been. Nicholas won a scholarship to a Yorkshire boarding school. In this village, there's me, and then the next oldest is Andrew there. That's it. I'm not unhappy, I'm not living on the farm and going to the school and boarding there. Oh, it's all right. I think it'd be better than living on the farm all the time. I wouldn't like to live at the school all the time either. Do you want to take up farming? No. I'm not interested in it. I mean, I'm not... And I said I was interested in physics and chemistry. Well, I'm not going to do that here. When I grew up, I'd like to... Uh... Find out all about the moon and all that. Would your father want to be a farmer? I don't think he really wanted to be, but he... I think he got stuck with it. And... Um... Cos... Uh, my grandfather, he certainly probably wanted him to be a farmer, but I don't... I don't think my father wants me to be a farmer. And... Um... My youngest brother's a deaf one. If he can't do anything else, he can probably run a farm. If he can't, you see. But as a last resort. Not till this holidays have I been out of Europe. This holidays I went to America to stay with somebody from school. Have you been abroad? Austria. What was it like? Not bad. Would you like to travel? No. Nope. 
Well, I ski in Switzerland, and I enjoy that immensely. And um, we went to France this time, and, I, and I've lived in Rhodesia. I enjoyed Switzerland most, I think. I think it's a very beautiful country. We went to very interesting places. I also enjoyed Austria, but not to a great, such a great extent. Well, I've never been abroad. But no, um, nor have I. I have, I know. Oh, I yeah, because you're on that cruise, Yeah, I went um, to uh, Spain and um, Gibraltar and yeah. Casablanca. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was interesting, though. Uh. Travelling doesn't really interest me, though. Well. Happy where I am. And I've been to so many places. Sicily, Italy, France and Spain and Switzerland. Many times. Have you travelled much? Uh, when I was at the school, we used to go to um, have outings. We used to go to Box Hill and places of such. And we used to go to mystery tours and drive around the country. We, used, uh, we went to history museums for outings and geographical museum and uh, science museum. I've been to Madame Tussauds with my mum and the planetarium as well. Do you want to go abroad? Um, yeah. I'd like to go to uh, Mallorca. Take a couple of weeks out there from everything. Relax myself. No, but I said that when boys go around with girls, they don't pay attention what, to what they're doing. Yes, it's my and grandmother had an accident because a, a boyfriend was kissing her girl, his girlfriend in the street. And the oh, girls my... never, never never do what the boys want them. They always no. start playing with dolls when the boys want to play rough and tumble with it's them. It's quite true. Beginning to become more important. Yeah. In what way? Well, that they're no longer just bores <laughs> who won't play this or something. They're over half of the community and they're there. And you can begin to talk to them. I think they're still bores for the most part. <laughs> when I get married, I'd like to have two children. Do you like to have a, a nanny to look after them, or do you want to look after them? I want a nanny to look after them. Have you got a new boyfriend, Susan? Yeah. Well, my girlfriend is in Africa, and I won't. I don't think I'll have another chance of seeing her again. And there were two in Switzerland, which I liked too, in the hotel. Um, you got any girlfriend? No, no, not yet. I'm sure it will come, but not yet. S say you had a w wife, they c play, say you had to eat what they cooked you, and, and say I don't like greens, well, I don't. Mm. And so she said, you have to eat what, what you give. give. So I, d I don't like greens, so she gives me greens. And, that, and that's it. I know I prefer to be alone, really. I wouldn't mind living with my brother, you know, but otherwise I'd prefer to live alone. Sometimes on Saturday morning I go to the pictures. Sometimes with my friends, sometimes with him. You don't. I do I don't ever really see ya. You. you go to a different pictures. Have you got a girlfriend? Nope. Would you like to have a girlfriend? Nope. I thought that one would come up because when I was when I was doing the other one and somebody said, What do you think about girls? And I said, I don't answer questions like that. Is that the reason you're asking it? Yeah, I thought so. Um, no, what do you want me to say? Um, I don't know what to say. Once Catalin Setford said she was good, she she loved me. 
do you think about it? And I'm going to marry, many, marry her when I grow up. Mm -hmm. I hate her. She's always getting bad-tempered and cross with me. Is she? Yeah. She says, Neil Hughes, move your desk forward. Perhaps I'm not mature enough yet to be interested. <laughs> so he loves um, Susan, because Susan loves him. He loves Lindsay, Lindsay loves him. I don't love him. Have you got any boyfriends? Um... <laughs> That's personal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the way you come out with that. We shall um, tell him, shall we? <laughs> What do you think about making this programme? I just think it's just ridiculous. I don't see any point in doing it. Why not? What's the point of people sort of going into people's lives and saying, why do you like this and why don't you? I don't see any point in it. What's the point of the programme? It's the point of the programme is to reach a comparison. I don't think it is. Because we're not necessary typical examples. And I think that's what people seeing the programme might think. Yes. Falsely. I mean, no, they, they tend to, to, to typecast us. So everything we say, they'll think, oh, that's a typical result of the public school system. Yes. Well, in what way aren't you typical? Well, I'm a bit more reactionary than most. I don't know. None of the parties really seem to agree with me, but I think if I had voted, I'd have voted Labour. I'd have voted Conservative. I don't think I would have voted for any of them. Conservatives? The Conservatives will, will do the best for the country. I, I think they're all as bad as each other, really. Labour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. I know what I wouldn't vote, though. In what way? Labour. Conservative. Why? Why? I sit right neighbour, I don't know. Cause I, I mean, I don't really know much about politics. I never, it doesn't interest me, so I never really bother. I didn't agree with the Conservatives about what they were doing with the black people, you know, racial policy. Jacqueline, <laughs> what do you think about coloured people? You said to me once um, that you like them, but what do you really think about them? Well, they're nice, they're just the same as us, really. But one thing, that it's only because their skin's brown and we're white. Sort of pinkish we are. Hmm. You think of a, of a purple person with yeah. red eyes and yeah. yellow feet. And I don't, I, yeah. You can't really think about what, it really, what they really look like. They're just the same as me, aren't they? I don't, I don't, know, I don't know anybody who's coloured. I don't, and I don't want to know anybody who's coloured. Thank you very much. <laughs> I haven't got anything any against coloured people, but I just I mean it wouldn't worry me if I never met one until the day I died. Everybody's got to get used to knowing coloured people. And coloured people in turn have got to get used to being with white people. Because if, if either side doesn't work properly, then no side will work properly. People have just got to mix in with everybody else. I do think it's wrong that in a country like England that there should be places where the, there are more coloured people than the white people. Good old Enoch. Well, personally, I've got nothing against coloured people. I think they're the same as anybody else. But it seems that they take, there's lots of an argument about them because, well, as any foreigners, really, that are taking people's jobs in England. I don't care what colour somebody is, not unless they're blue, and I think that would be pretty peculiar, but I might find somebody yet. No, I don't, I don't care about colour. Well, I think both black and white are equal. As long as they're as well educated as each other. What do you feel about racial discrimination? It's rather vile. Why? Because so, so is any kind of discrimination. Of a basic nature that you can't change. I mean, if you're... I, I couldn't care less whether people are discriminated against because they're... nasty or selfish or anything, but... I mean, one can't help one's colour. So... 
Now, you're interested in politics and would like to be a politician. What kind of things would you change? I wouldn't allow any strikes. How would you do that? I set up a tribunal um, where people, workers, could uh, apply for better wages. And this tribunal would have the final word. And if it said no wage rise, no wage rise. It's a big problem. It requires a lot of discussion, I think. The uh, workers do tend to take a few liberties as regards strikes. Who do you think is to blame for strikes, the workers or the management? Well, that's managing, probably, because... <laughs> Say the workers and probably get allowed to let yeah. it say <laughs> that. It seems to me iniquitous that people should be paid uh, when they're not doing any work, which is what the unions do do. I'm not commenting because my mum has been out on strike. Yeah. So is mine. <laughs> it's very irresponsible because we all want more money, as much money as we can get. And what would happen if we all stopped working just because we wanted more money? They want the money, why shouldn't they strike for it? I'm oh, sure right, if, you want, if you want it, so yeah, that's, you're yeah, that's, for that's, it. That's what they, but they're going to strike for it, right? They're going to get more money. Now, the school mills are going up, so that means they're going to strike again. They want more money, and it's just going to keep going and going and going. Surely by crushing strikes, then in a way that's defeating a small part of democracy. And it's mm. not because they, they, they'd still have their... Um, they'd still be able to ask for more money, but they, they wouldn't be able to strike for it, which, I mean, yes, is so damaging. It's still depriving them of their freedom to strike. Well, so it's putting people in prison, divided, de um, depriving them of their freedom to go on killing people and stealing from people. Anyway, who's going to do this? Because uh, if they do it, they're not going to be voted into Parliament. So it's not worth it. You can, you can always decide on your policy once you're in. What do they think about each other? And how would they act together? To find out, we invited them all to one big party and joined in. I like him. And they hit me right in the back and I've still got a pain there. The pushing. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. They're nuts. Just have to touch them. <laughs> um, well, I'm some of them are rather dirty. What do you think about them? I played them with them quite naturally. Um, I think they were rather nice, really. What do you think about rich people? Well, not much. Tell me, love. Well, they think they can do everything without you doing it as well. And they think just because they're rich and they have to have people like, like that, they have to do all their work and stuff. What would you do if you had lots of money about, um, me? Two pounds. Me? Anything. I would help the poor. Yeah, because the, the poor, if that you don't help them, they sort of die soon, wouldn't they? And we, every time we have a harvest festival, we send them food to them. Once these two, no, Janet, Susan and Janet Simpson went round giving it out with Mr. Floyd. I don't think much of the accents. Neither do I. N neither do I. But they don't prevent me liking them. Yes, and rich children always make fun of poor children, That's I yes. think. Yes. yes, they say, oh, look at that lovely little sissy over there. Yes, and, and they like throw that. things at them. Yes. Mm. yes, the poor child gets scared to death. Do you meet here many boys from very different social backgrounds? Not really. Do you find that a, a lack in your life? No. Why? I don't feel any lack anyway. Do you not feel you should be meeting a broader sort of person from different backgrounds? Not really. You don't think you're missing? No. I mean, there, there are people from so many. I don't see what backgrounds got to do with it. There, there, there are people from so many. With so many, I think it's interest that 
makes it, it worthwhile. There are people with so many varied interests in this school that I can't imagine of any more. I don't really see where background enters. If everybody had the same as everybody else, nobody would be missing anything. Uh, people, rich people, they have all different things, have everything they want, whereas poor people, they don't have nothing, and they know they, and they know they haven't got nothing, and so they know they're missing something. What are you missing? Well, I'm missing a, a bike and a, a fishing rod and. Yeah, they, well, they can get what they want, can't they? If you've got to work for it, and it's them, can you just ask for money and get it? And they can buy what they want. What effect do you think that has on them? Spoil. They get spoils them, doesn't it? I think if you're going to accuse us of our, the public schools of producing snobs by mixing only a couple of classes, upper and middle, and comprehensive schools can be accused of producing prols because they only mix with lower and middle. It's like saying that public schools like Tom Brown school days, we do mix with people from the town. They can be all right. Yeah, but I don't like people with too posh. They, they look down on everybody else. They think they're better. Yeah. I, I think people are much more conscious of wanting to become snobs because the difference that the differences that used to separate the classes have diminished greatly. I mean, sort of everyone was a duke, one used to be set above everybody else, but now, look at the duke of... Oh, okay. <laughs> but I, I think people are becoming less class conscious, because, I mean, um, with, with, for instance, hippies, you don't get the impression that one hippie says, Oh, I'm I'm sort of big guy because I'm upper class, and you're sort of some petty person because you're low class. Yes, and anybody can become a hippie. No, I think this is happening throughout the country. They don't sort of enforce being upper class and things like that at St Paul's. You know, they suggest that you don't have long hair, and they do get it cut if, and um, they te they teach you to be reasonably well-mannered, but not to sniff on the poorer people. Some of them are good with their money and give it. They're charities and that, but some of them just don't know what to do with their money, so they just spend it, waste it. People need it. I hate poverty for anybody, but... Um... Yes, it de kind of depresses me. When I went to Glasgow and I saw the baubles, that rather upset me. Why? Well, be to think that people are living in that state when we waste things every day. Well, some people are just born into rich families and they're lucky. I don't, I don't see why they should have the luck when people have worked all their lives and haven't got half as much as what they have. It just don't seem fair. Mm. I usually get about five to six bob a week. And what do you do with it? I save some, spend some. Well, I, I get a pound a week. And, um, well, usually during the middle of the week, my mum takes ten bob back. And I save the other ten bob as much as possible. Well, out of my permanent jobs, I get in four dollars fifty. Eight shillings a week. And what do you spend this on? Well, I, I need to spend very, very little at schools. I collect stamps, so I spend quite a lot of that on that. My dad gives me about two pounds a week. And my mum gives me about 30 up. And my brothers give me some. But Mr. Gosling gives me four pound pocket money every week. Um. I don't particularly want to be rich, but I'd like to have enough money. Well, what do you mean by enough? Well, enough to have a, a nice house and, and be able to send the children to a private school if you want to. I, I mean, almost everybody likes money, not for the fact that it... I don't like looking at money. It doesn't give me any pleasure like that, but 
I certainly don't want to be poor or live in a slum, but I'd, I don't, I mean, a person with uh, one million pounds is not going to be much, is not going to be more unhappy than a person with two million pounds. Oh, money's not everything. Oh, yeah, but it does mean a lot to us now, with the uh, clothes and new fashions and everything, doesn't it? The mm. middies and that. You need money. Cause yeah, well, what's middies? The clothes, yeah. You need clothes, but yeah, money can't money. buy happiness. Oh, no. You've got to work for that yourself, haven't you? <laughs> Do you want to be rich? Oh, I don't mind. I like to say where I am. <laughs> I don't want to be too rich. I don't want to, don't want to be poor. I like poverty. What about you, Jackie? Just live comfortable. Yeah. Mm. Just have what you want and no extras. Just as long as you've got all you need. Do you want to be rich? I wouldn't mind, no. Do you want to be rich? Well, yes, because I don't want to be tied down to the to the dullness of an everyday job. I want to be able to have enough money so I can indulge in you know, things that might interest me, like collecting paintings. And... Well, no, because if you're rich, you get bored of being rich. Same as if you're poor, you get bored of being poor. You can't have too much of a good thing. I think if you're healthy and have good friends, you can get on perfectly well. But everybody would like to be rich. Mainly to be self-sufficient, to feel that you don't have to, you know, owe anything to anybody. I'd help people if I had a chance. You know, by, say, giving a little bit of money to charity or sponsoring things or things like that. And I think it's wrong that one should drive oneself to make a lot of money, because in the end, you, you might have caused so many people, um, might have ruined so many people you'll be unhappy. What's the use of a lot of money if you're unhappy? You have to have it to live, and they're all sort of problems that you have to face, and it, everything's concrete, and it doesn't seem to be possible for anything to be invisible or sort of... Um, you can't see it. I mean, people... All the science has said, we've looked up into space, and we haven't seen God, so there isn't a God. And it just seems fatuous. Do you believe in God? I'm not sure whether I really believe in God or not. I think to myself, is there a God? And I don't know. So, I don't know. Yes, I'd say I believed in God. Are you religious? Well, I go to church with my parents on Sundays. You've got to believe in something. So God seems to be the most logical thing. I wouldn't say I'm deeply religious, no. I do believe in God. Why? I mean, that's a difficult question to answer. Why? I mean, I just do. I mean, it's an either a yes or no question. Well, you're brought up to believe in him, and you do. And you must have your own opinion on that mm. as well, though. Yeah, I don't but really I don't really know. I don't really know if I do or not. I don't really think about it much. No, you don't, you don't have much time to think about it. No. <laughs> Not when there's so much activity uh, taking place in school and out to school. That's the sort of thing I'd like to sit and think about or talk to someone about. When I sit down and think, I think I believe in God. But if somebody just asks me, I say no. <laughs> I suppose it's just to be big. Why do you believe in God? Well, I believe in God because if somebody had to make a world, this world, then call him what everybody else calls him, which is, which is God. You can't really tell if there's a, a God or not, can you? You haven't seen him, and you can't say. When you were seven, you wanted to be a missionary. Have you any thoughts on no, that? No, I don't want to be a missionary because I just can't talk about it to people. You know, I'm interested in it myself, but I wouldn't be very good at it at all. And I wouldn't enjoy it. Well, why wouldn't you be good at it? Well, I'm just not very good at 
anyway, standing up in front of people and making a speech or anything like that, but I'd like to keep it private, you know. Well, I'll go into Africa and try and teach people who are not civilised to be more or less good. And after that, Trinity Hall, Cambridge. I'm going to work in Woolworth. I might go to Oxford. Oh, uh, I just walk around and see what I can find. And then we think I'm going to um, Cambridge and Trinity Hall. Well, I don't, th I don't think I need to go to university because I'm not going to be a teacher. I don't think you want to go to university if you want to be an astronaut. What does university mean? Well, when I grow up, I'd like to find out all about the moon and all that. But if I can't be an astronaut, I think I'll be a coach driver. This is probably linked up with the fact now that I want to travel. I mean, my thoughts haven't really changed differently. So I definitely wouldn't like to be a coach driver now. You wanted to be an astronaut when you were seven. Yeah. What feelings have you got on that subject? Well, changed your mind completely, of course. I think it was just the uh, imagination that seven-year-old has. I will buy myself a new nurse house, you know. One yeah. that's all nice and comfy. I'd like to be able to have a happy family. I mean, I know that's not possible to be happy all the time. But as much of the time that was possible. Just just be content with what I'm doing and be happy with it. And to know where I'm going and to remember fondly what I've done. I, I think he'll follow in the legal career with a view to ending in Parliament. I like to do maybe short time typing or something like that. Nothing too much, I just wonder. Be just any like anybody else, you know. Nothing too too marvellous. What will you do if you don't make it as a jockey? Oh, I don't know. If I knew I couldn't be one, I'd get out of the game. Wouldn't bother. And what do you think you would do then? Learn on taxis. Taxi driver. There is a danger though that you would get married at early twenties and have children quickly and then be stuck at home. How are you, have you any thoughts on that? I don't really think about him much. No. I don't think I'd uh, get married too early. <clears throat> I'd like to have a full life first and I'd like to meet people. Before and, I... Yeah, before you go and yeah. meet yourself to a family. How do you think England will change over the next few years? England? Mm. Not very much. England is too English, you see, to me. Are you a traditionalist? Yes. In what way? I like tradition. Do you want to live your life in England? I think it's just about the best place you can live your life in England. Why? I think the parliamentary system is agreeable, I mean, to me at least, and I think that's about it. Well, one's free in England. Lame. And one has good opportunities for everything. We're, we've all got much more equal opportunities. In those days, the people at the bottom really had to work yes. like blacks so that they could achieve something. But nowadays, um, to get kicks out of life, it's put, you, you have to use synthetic means, whereas originally, uh, earlier on, about 40 years ago, these things came in life. These whereas with, with the bad. coming, with, with all the modern, well, in the modern world today, all the, lots of these things have been sort of stopped, and the enjoyment, a lot of the enjoyment of life has been taken out of it. Yes, the natural enjoyment. It hasn't been taken out of it, it's just people, it's still there if you look for it. I mean, but how many people can look for it? Everybody can look. Everybody can pursue happiness. At the end of their very special day in London, after their trip to the zoo and the party, we took our children to an adventure playground. 
where they could do just what they liked. Those from the children's home set about building a house. There's Nicholas. And Tony. and Bruce. John. Susie. Jackie and her friends. Give me a child until he is seven, and I will give you the man. This has been a glimpse of Britain's future. Mm -hmm.